Hey everyone, this is Daniel. And in today's video, we're gonna take a look at how to build your own group of virtual machines for automation process. Now, this is a continuation of my Power Automate for Desktop series, but in this video, I'm gonna focus on how we can go and create virtual machines to match the specs, go ahead and install the Power Automate for Desktop software in it, and then finally end with how to add it to a machine group. This sets us for the next video because in the next video, I'm gonna go and show you how we can take a desktop flow and then do a load balancing on this virtual machines group and how it can even be queued up. So this is a great series of videos. You don't wanna miss it. But first, here's my intro video. So the first place we want to come to is the Microsoft Learning Document. And right off the bat, we see the section for prerequisites and limitations. And as I scroll down, immediately I see that these are the hardware requirements to run Power Automate for desktop, specifically for single user sessions. But we'll go and take this information for the VMs that we're going to generate. Now, it's always a good practice to go and see what the recommended hardware is. Sure, they have a minimum hardware specs. We're going to stick with the recommended hardware. That's going to be good stewards to give the machine a little bit more power to do all the automation work. And then in addition to that, there is also the specs of all the operating system versions that we should use. So we're gonna stick with the Windows 11 and on the Windows 11 it says, okay, you have a home, pro or enterprise. So I think I'm gonna stick with the pro one, but we'll go to the Azure and we'll see what options we have. So that's all the information that I need from here. Now let's jump over to the Azure side. So now I'm in my Azure portal and before we jump in and create those VMs, there are a few things that you have to do ahead of time. First of all, you need to find the person, whether it could be you or somebody else who has access to do all of this. So go ahead and take a look at that with your IT professional team. Also, it's the subscriptions. Subscriptions basically means the exact same thing that you would do for your monthly subscription for all the other services that you use, either entertainment or some service exact same concept over here is that even Azure services run under a subscription process. And to do that, you need to at least get a few things taken care of. So I come over here to my subscriptions and in the subscriptions is what all is the overall subscription payment process that I'm using. So as you can see, I mostly restrict myself to the virtual studio enterprise because that's the one that I've been using. It's a pay as you go. You could have your own process. However, you need to get this figured out first um, or something you might already have. So now I'm gonna click on the Visual Studio and the other thing you wanna take a look at over here is your resource groups. Which of these are going to be specifically your groups? So for the sake of this example, I actually have something called a CFCS, that's just the acronym for my company, Christian Family Consulting Service, and then I've created it as a dash, virtual dash machine. And so this is now, as you can see, this is my resource group. That resource group is tied to that subscription that I showed you. So is it kind of making a little sense over there? Another thing to add on to that is my location. So I live on the East Coast of United States and therefore my location is on the East US, which means that's where all the VMs which we created in that location of the Azure section. So it's very important that you get this start figured out. And now that you've done all of this, let's go and start building that virtual machine. So on the home screen of Azure portal, you can either come directly up over here and go and do a search for virtual machines, or if that's something that you've been doing a lot, you might already find it up in the Azure services or in the recent. For me, I already have it in virtual machines, so I'm gonna go and click on Azure virtual machines. Now, as you can see, I've already got two of them created, but I'm gonna build on these and go and actually create a few more. So I'm gonna now come to my plus create, and in the plus create, I'm gonna select for Azure Virtual Machine. Now there's also these other options called Azure, Azure Virtual Machine with preset configuration. You might already have something like this in your tenant. Uh, so if you do opt into that, you might actually have some templates available. Again, opt into that. But if you're coming in fresh, just like I am, go to the first option, which is the Azure Virtual Machine. And so now I'm in the Azure Virtual, and this is where all the initial steps start. So again, see what I told you? It is very important that you get your virtual, I mean your subscription and your resource group gun because this is where you'll go and put all this information in. So I'm gonna stick with what I just said. That is my resource, my subscription and my resource group is going to be the CFCS virtual machines, just the one I showed you. So I've already gotten that taken care of. 
Now I need to go ahead and give my virtual machine name. And this is pretty standard when it comes to even building and imaging your machines. Imaging means installing your operating system in an automated process, imaging. Um, over there, you've got to give your virtual machine a name, that operating system or the machine a name. So we're going to do the exact same thing over here. I'm going to actually go and just paste my name. It's going to be rpa-host-3. And that's where it is. This I'm going to stick with that. I said three because I already got two others created for the overall machine group, which I'm going to show you later. Um, region, I've got some options over here. There is East US. If I click on East US, I've got East US. I've got East US too. Um, either way, I'm going to stick with one of them because I live in United States, which is in North America on the East Coast. And therefore, I'm going to stick over there. It's very important that you go ahead and do that because your VMs will be very close to your actual location as well. Helps with the overall internet latency, the number of internet hops that you do. All of that is factored in and taken care of by this, the location of where your machines are. So kind of keep that in your mind as well. And again, you might be any part of the world watching this video, trying to figure this out completely fine. Just scroll down and find the one that is closest to you. All right. So I'm going to stick with my East US because that's the one that I've done most. Um, and then everything else after that is pretty standard. So I really don't touch a whole lot of this. The only thing that I need to figure out over here is the image. So the Windows 11 Pro is something that I'm already using, something that I already have license for. So I'm going to actually stick with that. This is the license that I have. Next is now the size. Now, this is the important piece because let's go back and pull this information over here. So right here, remember, we went and saw this hardware specs. Um, so in the hardware specs, the minimum was one gig of storage and two gig of RAM. After that, they had a recommended one. So storage, two gig and RAM, four gig. Now, processor and storage, that's usually very easy because most of the ones that are already available in the VMs already exclude, I mean, I surprise that there's more processor speed, there is more storage speed. It's the RAM that usually where you got to keep a close eye on. So over here, the RAM is four gig. Now, when I come over here and I actually take a look at, oops, I went and selected something else. Uh, when I go and take a look at the sizes, this one, which is the standard underscore B twos, twos as in plural, it has two B CPUs. B stands for virtual, virtual center, central processing units. And then it gives me four gig. And also it can tell you that the overall price from me, if I keep this VM running 24 seven over 30 days, which is a month, it's going to cost me $30 and 37 cents. And let's face it, that is a really good price. Cause let's imagine if you're going to go and have your own physical machines, you're going to have to go and purchase them. It's going to cost you more than that easily. And so if you don't want to put any upfront money and spending to buy actually these assets, use these VMs. That's exactly what I'm doing. Whether you actually want to go from a production standpoint or even want to go ahead and do a simple proof of concept, use VMs. Because you know what's the beauty of VMs is once you're done, you literally power it down that virtual machine. You don't have to find ways to go ahead and get rid of those things. Uh, you just easily get rid of it by a click of a button. Uh, but I, I want to show you something else. When I click and see all sizes, you've got quite a few other sizes available. Uh, so I'm going to stick with the B2s because that's what you want. But this just gives you a very good overview that there are other options and starts giving you ideas for some other things that you want to consider a VM for. Um, so we're going to come back now. I'm just going to go back one more step over here to create the virtual machine. Everything is good as this and I'll stick with that. And now I need to give the username and password. Now you cannot go and put an admin. If you go and do an admin, it'll actually be one of the reserved words that you're not allowed to use. Azure has already reserved it. Uh, so what I do is I actually basically just go and put in a CFCS prefix that really helps me. So I stick, stick with that. And then I'm also going to go and put my password in. So I'm going to actually just delete that and I'll paste my password in. I'll go and paste it in again just to make sure that it is consistent. I see the green checks all the way. That's a good thumbs up for me. We'll keep proceeding forward. Now, there is all of these other things that you've got to go and allow. So we just need to be very careful of understanding what power automate for desktop needs. Now here we need to be very careful of going and providing the inbound port rules. Port rules or port numbers are very specific numbers along which internet traffic will be allowed to come inbound, which is into your system and outbound, which is out of your system talking to the cloud. So it's very important that you know what those port numbers are and assign the correct ones. And to do that, we got to go back again and take a look at the Microsoft documentation. So right over here is the documentation which Microsoft has provided for Power Automate for desktop 
architecture design. And it's really holistic information. I've taken this link, put it in the description below, read it at your own convenience. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down and I'm looking for a very specific thing. So right away here now it says, the outgoing web request for the UI flow service. It is actually a flow service that runs in the internal Power Automate for desktop. Uh, it is running over this service on port 443. And so I'm just gonna scroll down again and just scan to see what else we need. Okay, so we do need the HTTP as well. HTTP is actually port number 80. That's something I know. And then HTTPS is also over port 443, the one we just read up. So I already know I at least need two of them. I need port 80, which stands for the HTTP, and I need port 443, which stands for the HTTPS. So let's go and select that back again. All right, I'm gonna move this one over here to the right. I'm gonna come back over here to my ports. I'm gonna say allow selected ports. And then I'm gonna select both of them. I'm gonna select the HTTP, which is port number 80, select that. Then I'm gonna select the HTTPS, which is port 443, and we selected that. So we pretty much covered all grounds over here. We wanna select the 3389 because that is for RDP. RDP is we basically remotely access these virtual machines. Uh, so we will need that, so leave that as is. And after that, you're gonna go and click on the checkbox. I confirm I have an eligible Windows 10 or 11 licenses. We're gonna stick with 11. And so everything is good over here. Now, you are at a point where you can already go and say, hey, review and just create it. Or you can actually go and click on next to see what other configuration options I have. So let's just quickly go and see of them, you know, just to make sure what all it is. So right over here, we've got more flexibility. It's actually giving us to see, hey, do I want more data disks? Am I glad with what's already available? I mean, out of the box already, you've got premium solid state drive with local redundant storage. That itself is pretty nice, all right? Uh, so I'm gonna stick with that networking standpoint also. I like everything it as is. It's giving me my own virtual network, subnets, IP addresses, and subnets are good. I'm not going to meddle with any of these. Remember, these are the inbound ports that we selected before. Good thumbs up over there. Uh, so next, let's move over to the management piece. Again, management. Uh, one other thing I would make a change over here is, do I want to enable an auto shutdown? Um, that's up to you. For me, for my scenario, I'm not, because remember what these VMs are for. These VMs are to stay in standby to run Power Automate desktop flows. So I may need them at any hour of the day. So I am not going to go ahead and enable the auto, auto shutdown, which means that all the other ones are disabled as well. Because if I just take a look at it, the auto shutdown, it actually tells you what time of the day you want to shut it down, what type time zone it is. If I go and uncheck it, they all go away, all right? So this is pretty much something that I like. That's the one key point that I wanted to mention about. And then we'll go ahead and put all this our patch orchestration options. We'll go and keep that as is. Next, we'll go into the monitoring. Uh, in the monitoring piece also, I really haven't had any chances to make any updates over here. Everything looks good to me. Click on advanced, advanced. I don't want to go and do any customization. Um, all of you actually come from that desktop support and VMs. You will love this because you're able to add some customizations. Again, our scenario is very simple. Uh, so I'll just leave it as is, go to next. Don't wanna add any tags over there, so we'll, I can go to review. Review is fantastic. It, first of all, goes and does a validation. Like every setting that Daniel has selected, is it good to go? Let's just do a swipe to make sure if everything is good, and it did, it validated all that. And then it also gives me a really good overview, is that, hey, if you were to run these, this is how much it's gonna cost you in US dollars per hour. So if you actually take a look at this, um, it's only costing me four cents an hour to run this VM. It's Pretty good price and perfect for my scenario. Uh, so I like everything I see over here, which means now I'm gonna go and click on create. And so now the initializing has started. It is going ahead and now going ahead and actually setting up all of this VM process. And it goes through a series of steps. This is the one thing I just wanna point out because it says on the top left, deployment is in process and it's telling you what all is going on. So it's actually saying now in this section, it has already gone ahead and assigned a resource for you. It's already making sure that the network is all of there, all of the security groups are in place and it just goes through all of these step by step. Now, I'll remind you that this does take time. So this is one of the things where I actually go and start the process, then go and grab some lunch or dinner and then come back again. You know, it does need some time because let's face it, it is building you a whole machine. So let's wait till this thing is finished. And there you go, the whole deployment process is complete. In my scenario for this specific v VM, uh, it actually took five minutes to go and create the whole thing. So I'm pretty happy with it. What I'm gonna do is just scan through this really fast because in the next steps, it tells me what, I, what it recommends. Uh, it is telling me that, hey, set up auto shutdown. Remember, that's the one that we unchecked because this is gonna be a dedicated VM. So I went and unchecked that. Uh, but it's also saying all these other things, you wanna go and do that. 
So now I can go back to the resource place or I can create another VM. So I'm just gonna go back to the resource place. Uh, and then if I actually go one more step back altogether, uh, you will see in my virtual machines, I now have three of these robotic process automation hosts. So we are actually now building our own group of machines right away here. This truly is very exciting. Um, so I'm gonna go now into host number three. This is the place that I've actually got my stuff ready over here, okay? And you see right now it's saying the virtual machine agent is not ready yet. That's because it is just started. And as you can see, I can say that because the start is grayed out and the stop is there. So it just started for the first time. I've said, don't get alarmed by this message. Uh, nothing to be concerned of. But the thing is, how do I access it? And for that, there's an option called connect. And when you click on connect, it comes to this connect section and then it gives you either the IP address that you can use or you can actually download the RDP file. And I love that because it's already got all the sessions and all the configurations in it. So I'll just click on the download RDP file and I go ahead and take that and put it in a specific location. So in my downloads, I actually have that RDP that I just downloaded. I'm gonna drag that and I'm gonna put it over here because as you can see, these are where I've gone and put all my other hosts. So now that we've got the VM, now I'm gonna actually gonna click on this double click on that. This is a one time ask that it does. So I'm gonna say, don't ask me again for this connection. I'm gonna click on connect. And then after that, we go and put in that username and password that we first gave. So you remember what it was? I remember that it was CFCS admin. And then I go and paste in the password. Come here, paste it. I can say, remember me, this is mine. So I'll stick with that. I'll click on okay. And then it's gonna ask me this one more time. So I'll just say, don't ask me this again. And I'll click on yes. And now you are in your host. It is actually going in your own virtual machine dedicated for the automation process. This really is very exciting. It is going through the entire build process. Okay, like the exact same situation. You have a brand new laptop. You've taken it out of the box. You've actually taken up all the little seals on it and you're powering it up for the first time, this is the exact same experience, all right? So now it's gonna go through the welcome process and we just gotta wait till it takes us directly to the desktop. So we are in now the OS and this is basically the wizard section for the first time you're loading the operating system. It's asking me all the things that I want. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and now toggle off a bunch of things because I really don't need any of this. Uh, tailored experience, yeah, I'll leave it as yes. Advertising ID, I wanna leave it as no. Again, this is from my personal standpoint, you can pick and choose what you think is best for you. I'll click on accept. And then after that, we are now inside the operating system. Again, it is still loading in first time. It's all doing its jazz, uh, but we'll just let this finish. All right, so this is now Windows 11 Professional and you know that it has Power Automate Desktop built into it. So if I were just come on the search and actually start typing in Power Automate, you will see that it already has this app and it says it's the best match. So what I'm gonna do for this scenario is I'm actually gonna go into my settings and I'm gonna uninstall this one get a fresh copy from Microsoft, a full copy, and then I'll go ahead and update that or install the fresh one. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is actually have to come to the apps and in my apps, I'm gonna go and say the install app and in the install app, it's gonna go and load all of these ones. All I have to do is do the search for Power Automate and when I click on it, I can select it right over here in the ellipsis and I'll click on uninstall and in the uninstall, they'll say that this app and its real info will be uninstalled, that's fine go ahead and let it uninstalling happen, and it goes ahead and finishes it. Uninstall was immediately, which is great, because I do wanna go ahead and now install a full, fresh copy from online, because it'll always give me the latest version. And so for that, now I'll open up my Edge, and in the Edge on the top, all I have to do is do a search for Power Automate for desktop download. See, it already gave me a good idea there. Uh, it gave me a good recommendation, search result. Um, so I'll click on the Install Automate, and then I'll click on that, and right over here, the first step is download the Power Automate installer. So I've already got that, I've clicked on it, and basically I'm done with this site. So let the download finish. In my case, I did go ahead and finish it directly in my downloads. You see, it's, I have it right away here. Uh, so I'll just do a right click, run as administrator, and then now it will go ahead and start the installation process. And there you go, the installation automatic package happens. Uh, remember, if you did not uninstall the out of the box one, this is where it'll warn you. It'll say that, hey, you already have an existing one. What do you wanna do about that? You know, basically, we just went and uninstalled it. Um, also, this is a good place that you know that this is a fresh one because it's got a brand new version over here. Uh, I'll also show you another place where you can actually identify with these versions. Um, so just keep that in the back of your mind. So I've got this over here, uh, click on next. And then right on the top over here, I wanna go and do all the installation. So it basically selected everything. I like it. It even goes ahead and has the machine runtime app. This is something that we will need to set up the host and the group. So I'm glad about that. 
Uh, I'm going to leave the optional data collection as unchecked, uh, but I do have to go and select this install and I'll go and click on the install. And now we just got to wait for this installation to finish. And awesome, the installation is successful. So I can now go and click on launch app and it will go and now open up the Power Automate for desktop that we just installed. Also, if you notice, we've got a desktop icon also automatically added by this installation. So things are looking good. Everything is successful. And here we're going to go and now sign in, the first time sign in after it has gotten all of these things ready. So while it is doing that, there's a couple of things I wanna point out. Um, you see in this machine, maintain consistency. For example, on the bottom right over here, you've got date and time. You wanna maintain that consistency across the other machines as well, all right? And then the sign in, how is it? What is it? Do you have a service account? Do you have a dedicated account? Like what is it that you wanna go and do? Plan all of that ahead of time and have it ready over here because that account needs to have the right licenses and also have the right access to the environments. Get all of that figured out first and then you come over here. So for my scenario, I'm just gonna go and put in my credentials because this is my proof of concept and the example. So I'll just go and finish that off. It is going in and signing in. My authentication window comes up. You and I know that is very common. I'll put in my password. It's gonna go and do a multi-factor authentication. Completed the verification process. And now we're gonna go and officially sign in. Now you have seen this. I have done so many other videos in the past about this. You're all familiar with that, in fact. I'm willing to guess that you already know which environment I'm gonna select. Yep, you're right. I'm gonna actually come back and I've got a dedicated uh, pay-as-you-go environment, which is the Power Automate RPA pad. That's the one that I've selected because I've actually done the pay-as-you-go. I've spoken about that in my other videos, but this is great. I've actually got everything set up over here. On the back, this file explorer, I'll go and close that. I can come in over here and make it a little bit big. In fact, if I click on that, you should be able to see all your flows. There you go. So this is now known territory. Everything is good. We are happy. We've installed that. Yeah, let's just say you got flows running on this machine, which is awesome. Uh, what I gotta do now is go in and set up exactly what it says on the top right is that view machine settings. Now I can click over there or I can just come back to my search and in my search, I can go and say power automate. And when I do power automate, it has Power Automate Machine Runtime. This is the exact same thing. So if I click on the Power Automate Machine Runtime, it is actually going to open up that application which handles the machine running on your local thing. See, machine settings, that's the exact same thing. View machine settings, same exact thing. Oops, I didn't make that. Um, so here is something that you've got to go and do it at least once. First of all, your machine will run in this environment, which is not the truth. I want it to actually run in the environment that I've selected. So I'm gonna make that change, all right? That's the first thing, I'm gonna go and make that change. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit, and then right over there, Power Automate, Robotic Process Automation, Power Automate for Desktop. I'll select that. Moment I do it, it actually makes an update. And it's gonna ask this thing, say, hey, you sure you wanna change this environment? Because let's think about this. Uh, right now we are building this from, you know, fresh from scratch. If you're going ahead and adding this to say other production type of machine group environments, um, over there you could potentially break existing connections, especially if you've got this machine as a connection to one machine group and that machine group has got multiple flows running over there, multiple groups running over there and you take it from that one and add it to a new one, entire process in that existing machine group could break. So I'm really glad that it gives you this message, something that you need to be aware of. But in this case, it's brand spanking new and I'm good, so I'm gonna click on change. Uh, so it goes ahead and makes all the change for us. We've gotta let it finish it over here because believe it or not, while it is doing this here, it is actually going ahead and talking to the cloud, which is a Power Automate, desk, a Power Automate cloud. Um, and over there, it's actually configuring the system. It's updating the system. It updates your settings even on the cloud. So you gotta let it finish everything. And see that this is great because it says now your machine, which is the machine name, has been registered. And we will confirm that in just a second, all right? So now I'm gonna go to my machine groups. And in my machine groups, it is actually telling me that you've got this machine group over here. It's called as test group. It's basically telling me you, as a user, you already have a machine group. And we'll talk a little bit more about machine group, but I just wanna point this out is that if you have access to other machine groups, you will see them over here in your Power Automate Machine Runtime application. Um, in our, my case, I did. Right in the beginning, I actually showed you an existing machine group with two VMs I have over there. Uh, I've got that group, they are mine, and so I see them over here, which means I do have the option to add it over there. But in this case, I'm not gonna do that. What we are gonna do right now is switch gears and create a brand new machine group. So let's go and do that. All right, so now we are in the final segment of this video. 
So we've come into Power Automate uh, Cloud, which is basically from the browser. Make sure that you are in the current environment. Remember, these are the environments that we've assigned our new VM to. I've got two other VMs, I've assigned them to the exact same environment. And we can do all this clarification, confirmation right here. So as I come on, on, on the home page over here, uh, if you go down into the monitor, in the monitor, you've got machines right over here. I click on machines and this is pretty phenomenal with how much information it provides you. So right off the bat, remember when we add that machine three, it was already by default on the dev environment or my default environment. I switched it over to the RP environment. It said it was updating. This is what it was talking to. It was talking to the Power Automate um, cloud and it went ahead and registered that machine. Remember that as well? Well, it registered it. Other beautiful things, which is basically a lot to see over here, is all the machines I have. So I already have now a total of five machines. These two, are already part of a group that I was testing with. So it tells you that, hey, these two are group, here is the group name. Also, it tells you right off the bat, what are the different versions that you have over here? So for example, um, I, when I was creating the other hosts, the virtual machines, host number one and host number two, they have the exact same uh, versions over here of the robotic process automation desktop. Uh, this was a brand new one that we installed together and it had a newer version. So again, nothing to be alarmed of, but keep that in mind what I said, best practices could be that you actually have the same versions across all the machines, update them together at the same time, maintains consistency, helps with the troubleshooting. Um, so we've got all these machines over here. What we're gonna do now is go to the machines group tab and we're gonna create a new machine group. So let's do that and click on new and I'm gonna say create a new machine group. What we're gonna do is come over here to my machine group and now we gotta go ahead and give it a name. So I'm actually gonna come with this name over here. It is the CFCS, which is my company name, and it is also for the automation. So I'm gonna say this group is to run all the power flows, all right? And so I over here have put it in the description as well. Now let's read the next line. It says, reuse sessions for unattended flow. Uh, by default, it is no. I am going to leave it as no, but you've got the option to go ahead and turn this on as well. Because remember, this can be your pool of servers to also run unattended runs. Um, so you can leave it on, you can leave it off, whatever you feel is comfortable. Uh, just keep in mind, know what you want. Um, if you, this is purely for unattended flows, which most cases are, that's why you created dedicated virtual machines. So turning this on is completely fine. In fact, if it feels comfortable, you know, let's go and turn this on as well, okay? Nothing wrong with that. We'll go and turn this on and I'll go and click on create. So now it is actually creating this group. It says your machine group was created. Now add your first machine to start running desktop flows. Uh, but let's take a look over here, all right? Everything is good. Overview is already done. Machines are there. We've got no machines. It says add machine to get started to run desktop flows. You need at least one machine. So if I go and now add a machine, it goes ahead and does this. Add a machine, which means it's thinking that you're doing this existing, the machine which I'm showing you right now, the one I'm recording through, uh, it's as if it's behaving, hey, do I wanna add this machine? If you wanna add this machine, I need to install the latest power main desktop. That is why I, I don't wanna do it from here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to each and every one of my machines individually and add it from there. So let's go ahead and now start with machine number one. So I'll go ahead and close this off. I'll go ahead and minimize this. And now you can see these are my three virtual machines. This truly really is a very exciting time for me. Uh, you can see I've got host one, I've got a host two, and this is a new one that we just created host three. There's a really interesting setting in this remote desktop application and I wanna show that to you. I'll right click on that and you see smart sizing, click on it. And what it does is it automatically sizes the screen and shows you the entire screen on the virtual desktop and will resize it automatically. So it's pretty neat. So if I were to go ahead and now drag this, you see it automatically does that. Really powerful setting. So again, for the other one too, RPA host one, right click on that, smart sizing. This one on the right, it'll actually make a huge difference. I'll right click on this one, I do smart sizing and now it just shows the whole thing up. Pretty neat, so I'm gonna actually now go ahead and close this one up because we've already got the Power Automate machine time running over here. So I'm gonna start with the first one, which is host number one. So I'm gonna take this one and make it a little big right now. And over here, I am going to now go and search for Power Automate and the Power Automate, we're gonna take the Power Automate machine runtime. I'll click on it, all right? So now the machine runtime application opens up 
and B will do the next step, which is go ahead and now add this to a group. So right now it also goes and says Power Automate does our new version. I'm gonna save that and say no for right now. Uh, but it's just confirm a few things over here too, that it is connected uh, to your machine, it is there. Uh, it is in the correct environment as well, which we also confirmed from the cloud setter because we were able to see all five machines over here. But here we go, I'm gonna to come to the machine group. Now in the machine group, for the first one, it is actually saying that you've got now two groups. It's already telling me, you, Daniel, as a user, you've got these two groups. And that is correct, I actually have two, all right? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this existing virtual machine, the host one, and I'm gonna add it to this machine group. And the best thing I do is just click on it. And the moment I click on it, this section comes up. And it's very important that you pay attention to this part. Uh, it says, you are the first to join this machine group. In order to add other machines to this machine group, you need to share them this auto-generated password. Make sure you don't lose this password as you won't be able to recover it. This is a very important information that you do not want to lose it, all right? So basically, uh, I'm going to copy it to the clipboard. It is copied to my clipboard. I'm going to go and make sure I save it in a very safe space. I've put it in my own OneNote over here. Uh, by the way, I'm doing this all live, so that's why even I have to take precautions to do that. So I've saved it, uh, and now this is the first machine that I'm going to go ahead and add. It says, again, double checking, all right? It says, connections are managed at the group level. All current connections targeting a machine will break. You want to add the machine? Yes, this is my first time I'm doing it. Make sure you don't lose that password. I really like this thing. It's one of those trust but verify. It's like, hey, I, I do trust you, but just gonna ask again. You got this password? I said, yes, I got it. I have gone ahead, I got it. Yes, I got it. I've gone ahead and now saved it. Um, so you do its thing. So now it is adding this machine to our new group. The group name is CFCS Automation, and it automatically went and did that. But, but let's go up to the cloud side. So I'm gonna minimize this one. I'm gonna go up to our cloud directly right over here. Um, and if I just go and click outside and I come back into our CFCS automation group, I click over here. And then if I go into my machines, you will now see the first one has been added. So yes, we've already got the first one in, but let's, let's go and do the other two. Okay, this is very exciting. So now I'm gonna keep this over as this because we'll go ahead and refresh that. And so now we will go and do host number two. So I'll click on host number two. I'll make it big over here. I'm going to go ahead and search for that in my search. I'm just going to say power automate and the power automate get the machine runtime. The machine runtime will go ahead and open up over here. You and I know the first thing we are going to go and confirm is, is this tied to the correct environment? I'm just going to click on X for now. It's going and loading and yes, it is. It is tied to the power automate RPA pad, which is the correct one. So I'm good over here, right? Now I'm gonna to go to the machine group and in the machine group, it is going and loading. Yep, it already says I've got one machine. I'm gonna click on that and see now this is different because this is now the second machine. So it already knows that, hey, there's one machine, which means Daniel already has the password. You better put, you better have a copy of that password and then you better go and put this one over here. So I'm gonna do that. I went ahead and saved that password. I wanna do a control C. I'm gonna come over here and do a control V, paste it. And I'm gonna go ahead and add that machine. Again, it's gonna say while you are adding a machine to a group, connections are managed at a global level. All connections will break. Basically, when you are doing this type of adding and removing of machines, make sure that there are no other flows that are in queue or everything that are running. Um, so in my case, it's not. So I'm gonna go and click on add machine and it has successfully completed. Now it's giving me two machines I've added over here. You know what I'm gonna do next? I'm actually gonna go back to our cloud over here. I'm gonna refresh this, and as it comes back, you will see that we will now have two machines over here. There we go, the second one is there, it is connected. This is exciting. Let's go and finish the last one. So the last one is now machine number three. So right over here, it is our host machine over here. So I'm gonna go and expand this, make it a little bigger. We are already in the machine runtime. Uh, so right here now, in fact, if I go outside and come back in, or I could have basically just click refresh, it is going and thinking, getting all the latest information. It will see our new machine group. There you go. It actually sees the CFCS automation. Click on it. You know that this is brand new. So I, all I have to do is now go ahead and grab the password. I'll go ahead and do that. Did a control C, paste it over here, control V, and I'm gonna go ahead and add this machine. Again, does a whole trust but verify, goes through the process, adds that machine. Any second it is gonna go and say, hey, your machine is added and now you have three machines, which means we are done from this VM standpoint. And if I go up directly now to our cloud, which is directly accessed, and if I just go ahead and now refresh 
this section, you will see all three of our virtual machines have successfully been added into our machine group, which means now we've got a whole group of machines ready to go ahead and do our automation process. So in the last 40 some minutes, we went ahead and successfully built a virtual machine in Azure, and then we installed the Power Automate for desktop, the fully a version of it, and then we went ahead and created a machine group. And in that machine group, we added three virtual machines following the correct process. In the first one, when we installed it, we had to get that password. Do not forget or miss that password. Save it in a safe place. And then for the other two VMs, we added it by using that password. So we've successfully created the first half of this video, which is going ahead and creating the machine group for the Power Automate desktop automation piece. In the next video, I'll actually take a Power Automate desktop that I have, but we will now make sure that it runs across all of these machines, which means that we can actually do a little bit of load balancing and also making sure we can watch all the cues of all of this. That is gonna be a very exciting video. Everything we did today builds on top for that one, so make sure you watch that video. Thankfully, for you've watched this video as well, and hopefully you can set up all your VMs and machine group. So hopefully this video has been useful to you. And as always, keep using Power Automate, Power Automate Desktop. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.